Hello, my name is Ronald Clayton, and I'm conducting a video explaining the polar shift. As a prologue to this video, I want to illustrate a few things to keep in mind as I go into the video. First is how the Earth sets. The Earth sets on an axis of 23 degrees in relation to its rotational plane around the Sun. This 23 degree axis is the indicator for the north and south geographical location poles, often referred to as true north and true south, or celestial north and celestial south. These are not, and I say again not, what we refer to as magnetic north and magnetic south which you will find when you use a compass. Also, we are taught that there are three layers to the Earth. A crust layer, a mantle layer, and a core. However, the core is actually broken down in two parts. There is the outer core and the inner core. Now, the outer core and inner core are going to play a major role in explaining the process that forms our magnetic field and what is known as magnetic north and magnetic south. Scientists have long known that the magnetic poles move. The accompanying pictures show the path of the north magnetic pole since its first discovery in 1831 to the last observed position in 2001 and its possible position in 2050. Sir James Ross was the first to discover the position of the magnetic North Pole in 1831. A little over 70 years after that, a man by the name of Roel Amundsen in 1904 discovered it again. However, he had found that the magnetic North Pole had moved at least 50 kilometers north since its first discovery by Sir Ross. The pole kept going during the 20th century north at an average speed of 10 kilometers per year. During the last century, the pole has moved a remarkable 1,100 kilometers. However, since about 1970, the North Magnetic Pole has accelerated and is now moving at more than 40 kilometers per year. If this magnetic pole shift maintains its present speed and direction, it will reach Siberia in about 50 years. It's quite possible that the pole will veer from its present course, and it is also possible that the pole will slow down sometime in the next half century. Now, as I say this, keep in mind that what happens to the North Magnetic Pole also happens to the South Magnetic Pole. The strength and direction of the Earth's magnetic field is also affected, and it slowly changes with time. This is a phenomenon referred to as secular change or secular variation. The cause of secular variation is related to the process by which the magnetic field is generated. Secular change occurs everywhere on Earth, but the magnitude of the change varies from place to place and also with time. However, to understand this, we have to take a trip to the center of the Earth where the magnetic field is produced. Now, if you remember, I told you that the core of the planet Earth is actually two parts, the inner and the outer. At the heart of our planet, in the inner core is a solid ball of iron. It's about as hot as the surface of the sun. The inner core is 70 percent the width of the moon and it spins at its own rate as much as 0.2 degrees of longitude per year faster than the earth above it and it has its own ocean which is a very deep layer liquid iron known as the outer core. 
The outer core is sometimes referred to as an ocean of iron. It is an electrically conducting fluid in constant motion. Sitting atop the liquid outer core sheaves and rolls like water in a pan on a hot stove. The outer core also has currents that we refer to as almost as powerful as hurricanes or like whirlpools that are powered by the Coriolis forces of the Earth's rotation. These complex motions generate our planet's magnetic field or magnetism through a process called the dynamo effect. Scientists have been able to study this dynamo effect by using the equations of a branch of physics known as magnetohydrodynamics, which is the study of the conducting fluids and magnetic fields found within the core of the Earth. Now this big $50 million word is nothing more than saying that they're using the study of hydrodynamics or the motions of fluid in generating a magnetic field. Two scientists by the name of Glatzimir and uh, Mr. Paul Roberts created a supercomputer model of the Earth's inner core which stirs the metallic ocean above it and calculates the resulting magnetic field. By using their computer simulation these two physicists can set up a study for hundreds of thousands of simulated years to watch what happens as indicated by the two pictures that you see. What they see basically mimics the real earth. The magnetic field waxes and wanes, the poles will drift and occasionally flip. The physicists say that this change is normal and the source of the field, which is the outer core itself, is seething and swirling and turbulent, just like basically an ocean. It's chaotic down there, quotes Glatzmere, and the changes we detect on our planet's surface are a sign of that inner chaos. Now, since we understand this portion of how our magnetic field is generated, which is basically from the movements of both the inner and the outer core, we now understand that the poles shift naturally and this is normal. So where did this March 15th major polar shift thing come from? Well, there is something known as what's called the cataclysmic pole shift hypothesis. Now this cataclysmic pole shift hypothesis is a conjecture that there have been rapid shifts in the relative positions of the modern day geographic locations of the poles and the axis of rotation of a planet, i.e. the actual 23 degree axis of rotation. This hypothesis based itself on the precession and changes in axial tilt but this change is on a much longer time scale and does not involve relative motion of the spin axis with respect to the planet. However, in what is known as true polar wonder, or the true polar positions movement, the solid Earth can rotate with respect to a fixed spin axis. Research shows that during the last 200 million years, a true polar wonder of some 30 degrees has occurred. Now if you remember, I explained to you that the geographical poles, or the celestial north and south, are the points of rotation of the axis. Okay? This pole shift hypothesis describes a change in location of those poles with respect to the underlying surface, a phenomenon that is distinct from the changes of the magnetic north and south poles. As far as this magic date is concerned, Unless there is a large asteroid coming out of nowhere that hits the Earth at a specific angle, there isn't going to be a change in the physical axis or the physical poles on the Earth. The change is going on right now and will continue to go on, but it's internal within the inner and outer cores moving around inside the Earth at their rates, which affect the magnetic field 
in the magnetic poles on the earth. I hope this clears everything up and I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching.